The book of Revelation is one of the most challenging books of the Bible to understand. And it's been one that I've honestly kind of avoided a lot because it involves so much work and there's so many ways to get it wrong. For me, I see two opposite kind of extremes that people often take with the book of Revelation. The first, I think, is the most popular way, and that is by looking at Revelation as, as like a Dan Brown novel or something like that, like Da Vinci Code, looking for the secret clues to understand history that's unfolding around us. So it's seeing Revelation as a series of prophecy which are all going to play out in our time. Or maybe pulling just a step back and doing this at an intellectual level and asking, what is going to happen at the end of the world? What roadmap does the Bible give us through Revelation to understand what's going to happen when? And the challenge of this, more than anything, is that it's historically always been wrong. We have 2,000 years of people taking Revelation and saying, aha, this beast is this person in history. This prophecy is being fulfilled in this way. And every single one up till now has been wrong. That's not what's happened. Like every claim of Christ coming back, of the world ending, of the tribulation on the way, all of these have been untrue. And so now in our time, as we look at it and we say, I'm going to join that tradition of looking in Revelation and applying it to history today, I'm a little skeptical that we too might be wrong because maybe that's not what the book of Revelation is inviting us to do. On the other hand, we have an academic view that I think sometimes may strip away the supernatural from the Bible and especially from Revelation. This type of view can look at the book of Revelation and kind of just see a group of people who are writing something to their moment in their time. And God may be tangentially involved, but maybe not. And to me, I think that When we try to strip away the supernatural, the divine from scripture, we're losing what the book is all about. The early followers of Christ believed that God was at work in their midst. They believed that God was revealing things to them. And the book of Revelation is about what God is revealing. So I don't think we can strip away the idea of God or revelation from this book and get the kind of rich depth that historically Christians have found in it. There's a reason this book is part of our canon, part of our scripture, our Bible, and that is the belief that God is revealing supernatural truth in it. So if we take away these two kind of extreme positions, is there a depth to the book that we can find? And I believe that there is. And I'd like to invite you to join me in studying the book of Revelation. Now, I've kind of eliminated a large percentage of what a lot of Revelation studies might be. And so for this, I'd like to invite you on something a little different. And that is maybe a measured, thoughtful, in-depth look at the Bible that weighs multiple points of view and that doesn't get too caught up in applying it to our current moment of history but that never forgets that God is at work in the midst of it and that God is revealing stuff and to look for what God might be revealing. Here is the plan and what that's going to look like. Over the next nine weeks, we're going to be studying the book of Revelation together. We're going to start next week with an introduction and then have eight weeks where we break up Revelation into different sections and read them. And so at the beginning of each week, I'm going to release a video kind of outlining what the challenge is for that week. What passages are we reading? What might we be on the lookout for? What are some questions that we can have in mind? Some ways to encourage you to dive in and read the book for yourself. And that's essential. There is no way to do in-depth study of the Bible without reading, without studying Scripture. You simply cannot show up and watch a video on Revelation and understand it without having read Revelation. So that's going to be the first part of each week is outlining what section we're doing of the book for the week and then some some encouragements to you on how you might want to take a look at that. In the middle of the week, I'm going to release a video doing just that. I'm going to invite you to study with me as we do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through the passage here on video Pull that up on screen so you can see it, invite you to join me. And I'm just going to do in a, you know, whatever challenge I gave you, whatever I asked you to look for, whatever I 
questions I asked, I'm going to answer those, look at those. I'll be highlighting, maybe taking notes as I go. And you're invited to join me for that. If you think, wow, that is so boring. I'd rather do this on my own. I do not want to watch you study. By all means, feel free to skip it. It's just in case you are interested. And then at the end of the week, I'm going to do a more traditional kind of in-depth study where I outline what the passage has been about and some different views and interpretations of it. And um, I'm probably not going to tell you this is how I'm reading it, but rather give you a range of interpretations and ask you, which of these do you think resonates with what you just read? Which of these do you think has a stronger argument or what can we learn from all of them? So that's the idea. I am looking forward to it. And I hope that you get something meaningful out of this study. And I hope that you come to understand the Bible and particularly the book of Revelation better. So looking forward to seeing you in the next video as we kick off our introduction to the book of Revelation.